Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel, aka Hashlips, and welcome to my channel where I teach you how to code. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to generate NFTs using the Hashlips art engine. We're going to be generating poems. And yes, it might seem weird, but with some good thought behind this, you can actually generate poems with the Hashlips art engine. As we all know, poems have structure behind them. We got taught this in school, or if you're still in school, you're getting taught how to write poems. The purpose of this video is not to look at the structure of a poem, but instead to provide you the tools and the know-how on how to generate them with code. Welcome back to my video series on tips and tricks on how to use the Hashlips Art Engine for different use cases. Each one of these videos are unique, but it does contain this pre-recorded section on how to get started. If you are new, keep on watching. If you have seen it and you've already implemented the Hashlips Art Engine and just want to see the tips and tricks, just skip this little bit on the setup. Before we get started, me showing you how to set up this awesome engine that will help you generate thousands of images. Don't be discouraged if you get stuck. If you do, go ahead and go to hashlips.online and follow us on Discord. The Discord channel is constantly growing and there's a lot of devs that will help you out. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would really appreciate that and let me know in the comments right now that you are starting this course. I love seeing that and also give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. Now that that's all said and done, let's get started with this tutorial. To get started on your generative journey, you have to go to github.com forward slash hashlips. Once you're here, you can simply click on all the repositories that's available. We can go down to the hashlips art engine repository or alternatively you can go directly to this link up here. We need to download the code and if you are well versed in Git, you can use this method by cloning the repo. If you are not and you're not a programmer, go down here to the releases section. Click on releases and download the latest version. If you want to follow along with these videos, download version 1.1.2. You can simply go down and click on source code zip. I have now downloaded the zip file of the Hashlips art engine. Double click on this or extract it with your favorite unzip tool so that you can get the folder like so. When you open this, you'll find that there's numerous folders and files in this Hashlips art engine. These files are necessary and is part of the Node.js program that we are about to run. The most important files that you're going to be working with is in the source directory there's a configuration file and this layers folder where we're going to place all of our image layers. This I'll explain later in this video but for now our first part is done. We now need the dependencies like Node.js as well as an IDE and we are going to be downloading Visual Studio Code as well. So like I said we would need Node.js, the framework, in order to run our program. Now we cannot download the latest Node.js because sometimes there's issues with the latest version not compatible to our program. So we are going to make use of the version 14. So instead of 16, go ahead and go to this URL and you can choose for your operating system what you would like to install. I'm going to install this package of version 14.18.1. You are also going to need Visual Studio Code, an IDE which is used to edit code and it's very convenient to use. So go and install this on your operating system. Once you've installed Visual Studio Code, install Node version 14.18. I'm going to install it by simply clicking on the package and depending on your operating system, this might differ for you going to enter my password and let it install. After installing, we can open Visual Studio Code and verify that we have Node.js correctly installed. I'm going to close this, then go and open Visual Studio Code. This time, I can locate where the Hashlips Art Engine was saved. Open the Hashlips Art Engine folder and then 
in the terminal down here, you can simply run node dash V and hit enter. You should see that we have now version 14.18.1 of node installed. Sometimes when you start up Visual Studio Code, you might end up with a screen looking like this and not seeing your terminal at all. What you can do is go to the top panel over here and select terminal, new terminal. Then you can run any command in here again and press enter. This is just for if you don't know where your terminal has gone and a way to get it back. I'm going to close all these folders because we're going to discuss them on a later stage. What we need to do now is install the dependencies for our program to run. Simply run npm install and hit enter. What this will do is actually grab all the dependencies needed from the internet, download them in this node modules folder and in here it would give us the right frameworks and packages to work with in order to run our program successfully. So let this install and give it a few seconds. Once it's done installing, you'll see the output like this. Don't worry if it says warning, this is just due to dependencies that have a mismatch in versions. Next, what we want to do is test out the program by running npm run generate. What this function will do, if I click enter, is it will look in the layers folder over here for all the layers and associate it with our config.js file. It will look in what order these layers are structured and see how many it needs to create. You can see down here it's created 1 to 5 images. A new build folder will be created here at the top that contains the images as well as the metadata in this JSON folder of each of these images. The metadata of a file is extra data on what it is. So basically, if you go to this one.json file, you can see that it has a name, description, image, DNA, and so on. It also has a bunch of attributes. If we go to one.png, we can see that these attributes go with this image. And that's because the traits have a site and I, it has a white eyeball, it has a black background, and indeed we can see there's the cyan, eye, the black background, and the white eyeball. This is needed in the NFT world in order for marketplaces to correctly display what this image is as an NFT. So I'm going to show you how you can generate thousands of images using the Hashlips art engine. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the application. Now, if you look in the SRC folder, the thing that you need to concern yourself the most with, or familiarize yourself the most with, if I can say that, is the config.js file. In this file, it contains all the configuration needed to configure what you want to generate. You can read up more on this if you go to the GitHub repo and go into the readme file. Once you get here, you can see what each configuration does and how it is used. This is very useful for if you want to play around with very cool concepts that this program offers. In essence, it all comes down to the layer configuration. You will see that there is a layers folder over here and inside the layers folder, it contains more folders. Each one of these folders are layers of images. Let's go into the eye color. You can see that there's a cyan, a green, a pink, purple, and these are eye colors. We also get the iris, which are just black dots. Then we also get maybe the top lid, which are purple eyelids. Each one of these layer files has a name, a hashtag, and a rarity weight. These weights works by a weight. So for instance, if you have all of these files, you can see that this yellow over here of the eye color has a hashtag 10, meaning that the rest all have ones. Yellow would be most likely chosen between all of these. How you would generally use this program is by creating different traits. These folders inside the layers folder each represent a trait 
that will show up in your metadata. And this in turn will be used by marketplaces to show what your NFT is made out of. So once you've populated these layers, you would generally go to the config.js file and then go and populate in what order you would like these layers to render. The program will then dynamically and automatically go and select these attributes from the files within it. It would look at the rarity weight and then decide how it's going to build up each image. The grow edition size 2 is the determining factor on how many NFTs or images you want to create. So if I make this 10, save this configuration file, in the terminal run npm run generate and I hit enter, you will see 10 images being generated. Now you know how to set up the Hashlabs Art Engine properly and you've seen it in action. This is the end of the pre-recorded setup section in this video and from here on outwards you're going to learn new tips and tricks on how to use the Hashlabs Art Engine. Now that we have the Hashlabs Art Engine set up in place, we need some kind of way of getting the artworks to generate. We need to create layers for us to use. I created this template in Photoshop, but you can use any photo editing software that you like. You'll see that if I zoom in, and maybe if I make it more apparent, you'll see that these are dark and light little boxes inside a big cube. This is done so that I know if I write my poem that I can keep my lines inside of these boxes to later on extract them and create layers of each little piece. This is going to be considered as my structure of my poem. And that's why it's up to you to create your own little structure that you would like your words to fall in place. You can create different kind of structures and I'll show you a way of how to do that as well when using the art engine. For now, create a structure template like this and then make sure to put these T brackets in place. The reasons why these are here is to realign this document after it's been scanned in. Once I'm happy with the format of my template, I go and create a new file which will represent one of these segments and this will be the place where we export our layers from. The first step would be to kind of grab one of these. So I'm going to go and grab this group and I'm going to pull it over into my new section. It's very crucial that all these align perfectly. At this point, I ungroup everything that I have here so that I can rename them properly as well. I've gone ahead and renamed each one of these lines. I'm going to refer to this top one as L1, line 1. This one over here, L2, this one L2 underscore 1, this one L3, this one L4, L4 underscore 1. You get the picture. I also removed the background and now we have this white background with these blue boxes. This is going to be considered our guidelines and where we're going to make certain cuts of our poem to split our poem into layers. The biggest question right now is where is our poem? Well, we need to create that first. So go ahead and turn this into a grayscale image, your template, print this out and start writing poetry. Now it's up to you, like I said, to make sure that certain lines will make sense when they get mixed up. So write it in a nice constructive way, thinking about how it will fit in together. I'm just going to do an example to show you so that we can go ahead and generate some poetry. And there is my attempt of writing something, so please ignore my handwriting. And I've just scribbled the last one with a bunch of characters just to kind of get some content. Now I'm going to go ahead and import this back into Photoshop and realign the images. In Photoshop, I'm going to drag and drop this in here. I'm then going to go ahead and move it to the top so that I can see it a bit better and then scale it up. So for me, I usually go ahead and try and get it as close as possible aligned to this cube. This is where these guides come into play and become very, very handy. Once you are happy with the size, you can go ahead and align this corner so it's off the screen. So we want this to be off the screen like this, 
meaning that we should now kind of have a centered image and now we can extract the text. We need to do this four more times. So go ahead and duplicate this image, then move it over holding shift so that you don't lose your position and then make sure that this alignment bar is also off screen. Then do it again. This time we're going to go upwards every time making sure that we align the image one more time and this time I'm going to move it right again like so. What I do next is click on the select button up here at the top and select color range. You can go ahead and select the color range that you would like to actually have it save or select. So I usually click on this plus icon and then select variants of grays so that I can see the most being selected. After I'm happy, I can go and click OK, then go to this tool, right click and say copy. Then I can get rid of this bottom layer because I will have my pure text layer here. After doing that, we can now see that we don't have our backgrounds anymore and we left with the dark text. Now you can construct this poem however you like. You can even type this out with text, purely digital. I took the route of going hand drawn because I like the feel of it. But now, once we have all these layers, it's time to actually cut them out in the different segments. We now have to cut each segment out. Now I did not stay inside the cube as you can see from this Y extending over the blue box, which is a little bit of a problem, but I'm going to go ahead and generate these anyway. This is a time consuming job, so maybe you have a better way of doing this. If you have, leave it in the comment section. Whatever way you choose, it might be time consuming, but it's worth it. I'm going to go ahead and select this blue box over here by holding command. And when I see this box icon, I can actually click on this layer. This will make ants and select this box. Then I have to go to my layer at the top. Be sure I'm on this tool, right click and say cut. Once I've cut this out, it is now time to actually go ahead and rename this. I can now hide this layer and then rename this as maybe one. Then I'm going to open my second layer, hide that one and do the whole process over again. Going to select this blue box. Once it's selected, go to my second layer, right click, cut, name this to one as well and then hide them. I'm going to do this so that I can cut out each segment of text and have them in different layers. I'm not going to bore you with doing this and I'm going to quickly run through and do all of them and then show you the final result. Now I've cut out every single segment and you can see that if I just click and reveal the layers, they start populating. We can see that I've done this and renamed them one to 10 for each one of these different layers. It's important and in Photoshop, you can have multiple layers having the same name. So let's unhide all of these layers because in the next step, I'm going to show you how to batch export all of them. I can go ahead and now either unhide or remove the background and all these blue layers. Then once all of them are visible, they look quite weird, but you can go and say file, export, layers to files. Once you've done that, you can go and locate a place to save it all. I'm going to go and save it inside this project that I have over here. I'm first going to go ahead and create a new folder and let's call this raw. Once I have that, I can say open. Then make sure that you don't have trim layers enabled. It needs to be transparent and visible layers only. For the prefix, I'm just not going to select anything. Let's click on run. This will now go ahead and export each layer, keeping the size of the square. And that's exactly what we need. Once it is done, you can open Visual Studio Code and check your files over here. You can see that I've already started adding them to subsequent folders inside here. What I'm busy doing is basically creating a new folder and calling it, let's say L4 for the fourth line. 
Then I look at the image and it's quite hard to see over here, but if you open the file explorer and you go and view that image, you can see that it's this text. Now I know that there's two parts to it, so it's basically just putting these things in the right folders. So what I'm going to do now is just select all the fives over here and pull it into this folder. I'm going to move it and we need to create the second part. So a new folder, L4 underscore two, and you can call these folders anything you like. The only reason why I'm calling it like this is because I want to keep it structured. But keep in mind, whatever the folder name is and the file names, they will show up like that as the metadata. So once you've sorted out these files into their respective folders, each one should now contain four. And the reason why that is, is because we basically had four segments or four poems that we took this from. Now we're going to take all of these folders and place them in the layers. Open this layer folder and remove all the folders inside. I'm going to delete them. Then I'm going to drag all these folders inside the layers. Once I've done that, I can simply remove this raw folder. We don't need that anymore. We can now move on to the next step, which is opening the source folder with the config.js. We have a layer configurations property which is a setting that we can change in order to determine how we're going to generate these images. We already have the old folders in here, well the old layers, so to speak, so let's go ahead and replace them in the layers order. This property over here determines in which order it will start rendering. You can see we're going to render a background first, then so on. In our case for our poem, that really doesn't matter because nothing overlaps each other, but it does come into play when you're generating avatars. So let's go and add these folders. We have L1, then we need L2, and we need L2 underscore one, and so on. I'm gonna list them and then get back to you. I have now placed in all of my folder names that I want to use as my layers. And the spelling needs to be exactly the same as how they are spelled over here on the left hand side. You can switch the orders around over here, for instance, if you want five to render before three or two, whatever the case might be. But in our case, it's not necessary because nothing is overlapping each other. In order to run our program and give this a test, let's run this in the terminal, type in npm run generate. When we hit enter, I can see that there's an error and the error is quite clear. It says that it cannot find this layer, which is absolutely true because this is not the right uh, folder that it's pointing to. Here we are searching for L4 underscore one, but we only have L4 underscore two. So I'm gonna rename my folder and make it one like it should be, save it and then run it again. So I'm gonna clear my terminal pressing command K and then up arrow to get my latest command back. npm run generate, let's hit enter. Let's hope that our collection is successful and it is. We have seen 10 images, poems being generated. Now if we go to the build folder up here, we can see here are our images. And how cool is that? Now there is a default color background that's being rendered beneath them, so that's fine. It makes it also easy to see. I can show you how to change that in just a second. The key takeaway here is that we managed to actually generate poems from different layers, image layers, and you can do this with different kind of images as well. Now, whether these poems make sense or not, that's debatable because I just simply wrote some stuff down. But if you are thoughtful and think through the whole process, maybe making use of nouns and verbs in the right places, you can construct some kind of sentence structure, which would in turn make a poem. This is pretty cool and I'll leave it up to you to explore. What I do want to discuss is how to get a different background image. And the whole purpose of these videos are to actually educate people on how to use the different kind of elements or the nuances that the Hashtabs art engine brings. 
That's why by watching this whole series, you will get used to doing anything that's possible. In the config.js file, we've got this background object. It has a generated, and if you put those to false, and you save this file and rerun the generating, we can now see that the generated images are transparent. They still have the text, but you cannot really see it because of the background. Alternatively, you could go and add a background solid layer in here right before everything renders, which I'll show you, or you can go to the background section again, turn this back to true, and instead of it being a random color, and you can change the brightness of that color by the way, we are going to make this a static image. So turn static image or static to true, and then let's replace this with a brownish paper like color. I'm going to save this and rerun the generator running npm run generate. Once I do that, I can check out the images and now they're all on a solid background color. Alternatively, you can add to your layers maybe a background layer and this is just a folder and inside I've got this paper.png. I can then go to my configs file and go and add it. I want it to be the very first one so I'm going to place it here at the very top and then I'm going to rename this to the folder which is background. Once I have this I can say save and because there's only one in there it would most probably choose paper. Let's run it and let's see what happens. We can now see that our poem is actually displaying on this paper like texture. This looks freaking cool. So now I also want to discuss what the metadata of these images look like. The metadata is a crucial part of an NFT, especially if you are planning on using these images for a big collection on the blockchain. Usually metadata comes with a name, description, image, location and so on, as well as the attributes. The attributes consist of a trait type and a value. And you can see that the trait type is the name of the folder of our layer. That's why you can call them in the respective folders or the naming conventions that you would like to see the traits display on OpenSea and other marketplaces. The value would be the image name. So if you want it to be displayed differently, rename your images as well. We'll dive more into the metadata as the series progresses. But for now, understand that this is a file that describes what's happening to each one of these images that was generated. If we go back to the config.js file, you can see that there's this grow edition size too. This is the variable that you would like to set on how many images you want to create. I'm going to go ahead and try and create a hundred images based on the amount of layers that I have. Keep in mind that you need a lot of layers to produce a hundred unique images. This won't be a big challenge, a hundred, but let's say a thousand might be. We can test that out but let's create a hundred for now. I'm going to save this and run the program again. You will see it easily create and it will create a hundred different poems based on the layers that we've provided it. How cool is that? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please leave me a like and a comment and also subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to continue this series showing you the rest of the tips and tricks using the Hashtips Art engine. In the upcoming videos, I will explain more tips and tricks on how to use this engine, looking at things like how can we add rarity weights to determine which layers should be more rare, how to rename the files and make more sense of it, and how to do different layer configurations. I'll be explaining this, so keep your eyes out for the next video. As you can hear, the thunder and the lightning is back, so <laughs> I'm out of here. Have an amazing day and see you in the next video.